Hello, and welcome to episode 278 of the Casual Tryhard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And uh, today, as we're recording, was the uh, MH3 uh, release or like... Reveal whatever. stream. Reveal stream yeah, or whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. And uh, they also released the mechanics article. Yeah, so we're going to go through the mechanics article today. Well, at least some of it. There yeah, are... In Modern Horizons sets, they don't make new mechanics. They make cards with existing mechanics and reprint cards that already exist, therefore not having new mechanics. Um, yes. But because it's like a higher-end set, there are a lot of mechanics. The complexity level is through the roof. So I think there's, I don't know, like 40-something mechanics in this set. We go from A to OO. Yeah. However oh, far that is. A lot. Um. I keep, I don't have my glasses on, clearly. And so every time I look at the OO, yeah. I think it's just the infinity sign. <laughs> like we just got to infinite mechanics. Ooh. So we're so, just going to keep going. There, there are a lot of them. Yeah. So we're going to go through some of them, uh, some in more detail than others, but we're going to go through that today. Yep. Sounds like a plan to me. We'll get as far so, as we get. And then, uh, we, so we have hit. Spoilers. We have. So we will have a little bit of content going forward, but if you have things you want us to talk about, um, since um, Modern Horizons 3 will be on Arena, maybe we will talk um, draft archetypes. I, I would like, like to do that, because I yeah. plan on... well, Firing up a draft or two? I'm pretty busy coming up soon, but yes, I, I would very much like to fire up a draft or two of Modern Horizons on Arena, since it I'm assuming is basically going to cost the same as any other set instead of two or three times as much like it would in an LGS. Um, they on the stream or like you know pre-produced package they did show the Modern Horizon like draft like page. Yeah, and I think it was 750 gems. Okay, so I think that's about normal. Yeah, it sounds normal. So yeah, now they could very well change that number, but sure. it is it is normal. But if you have other things you want us to talk about, reach out to us on social media, Facebook, Discord, Twitter, all that stuff. Uh say hey, if you have a cheap place to rent in uh, Madison, <laughs> Wisconsin, please uh also let us know. Or, yeah. Um yeah. so, looking for uh, a yeah. place desperately, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, hey, we have a network now, we might as well use it. That's right. I think there's people in Mad Madison. I'm almost positive we have we have listeners in Madison. There we go. Uh, yeah. If Hello, you're looking... Mr. Black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're looking to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first is with our TCG player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. Follow that link, surf on over to TCG player, make purchases, and support the show at the same time. We would appreciate that. It doesn't cost you... Guys, anything more than you'd normally be paying for your magic product and get to help the show. Uh, if you're looking yeah. to support us more directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. Surf on over there, chip a couple bucks in, you get access to our pre-show. You get access to twice the amount of content out of us because we record our pre-show and pipe it right into your ear holes. And uh, you get to support the show. We appreciate that. Patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. So we got we got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to go through. A lot of mechanics. So uh I know we've talked about this in passing from time to time, but mm -hmm. we have um Kindred. Yes. Which is the artist formerly known as Tribal. Yeah. Kind of an awkward mechanic because it's not really a mechanic, it's a card type. Yeah, so basically uh, it looks at creature type to do something, but it also allows them to put creature types on non-creature spells. Yeah. So things like is a goblin war chief reduces the cost of goblin spells. Mm -hmm. um, if you had a goblin tribal card or a changeling tribal card or whatever that counts as a goblin, a uh, goblin war chief would then make that spell cheaper. Yeah, so like nameless inversion, mm -hmm. 
um crib swap is yeah is is like one in a one in a black but it's it's all creature types it's like a changeling mm-hmm. so that it would only cost like black yep so kindred is also a card type so for tarmogoyf or delirium. delirium it counts as an additional card so like tarfire yep is i guess technically now a tribal i'm uh, sorry a kindred goblin instant that is correct so it's it is two types. It is kindred and um, got gob- in instant. Yes. Yep. Um, so and that goes for all of the existing tribal cards. They've all been eroded to be kindred, not tribal. So it's not. Yes, it, it doesn't work any different. You can't have a tribal and kindred card because they're just both kindred cards. Yeah. So bitter blossom is a kindred fairy yep. uh, enchantment. So, yeah. Anything else to note for Kindred? No, I don't think. Like, it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. So we well, Umbra. I mean, it's it's not super intuitive, but it is straightforward. It is not. Yeah. So what does Umbra Armor do? So Umbra Armor uh, is formerly known as Totem Armor. Um, this is kind of a weird one because I think all of the cards with Totem Armor were Umbras. Yes. Um, I think I don't, so, yeah. I don't know why they're making this change, but... They are. Um, Umbra Armor is an ability on auras that would destroy the aura instead of the creature if the creature would die. So something like a Fatal Push killing your creature, if it had an Umbra or a, an aura with Umbra Armor on it, you could choose for it to kill the armor instead of the creature. Um, same goes for lethal damage. You can choose to have it kill the Umbra armor instead of the creature. Um, but it does not protect against, like, uh, dead weight. If it has negative toughness, the creature will still die regardless of Umbra armor. Um, it does not protect against exile. The creature will still get exiled. And for some reason, it doesn't count sacrifice. I would think it would count sacrifice. Yeah, is cause, well. I think it specifically says if it would be destroyed, okay. versus if it if it dies. I got gotcha. you. I would be. I think that's the only that makes sense. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is uh, a very boggles mechanic. Mm-hmm. So it's I. It's a think limited this mechanic, is, I think. Yeah, but like it's also like the. You know, one of the things that Horizon sets typically do is they try to give new cards to old archetypes. Yeah. And, like, one of the better ways to play Boggles was to put um, Umbra armor on yep. things, I guess. All right. Um, and a mechanic that has never been problematic... Um, energy. Totally not broken at all. No. So energy is a counter that a player can have and at least up until this point there was like one card that interacted with energy. What card's that? Uh, like, uh, was it Sun Cleanser from Ixalan? Oh, okay. It was like one and a white uh, it entered and like removed all Removed all counters from a player. Oh, okay. I do believe. Well, there was like Solemnity also. Was it Solemnity? Solemnity With... may have done the same thing. Well, it like prevented you from getting counters. Yes. Uh, my internet's not working for whatever reason as it does. Mm-hmm. I would I would have looked this up. That's right. Um. So, um, the. Th- the thing that made energy broken the first time was they did not know how much of a card a single energy was. Right. And it kind of worked out that like three energy was probably a card mm-hmm. based on like how you could spend it. Yeah. So like a, Rogue Refiner, which was like one blue green for a three two that ETB drew you a card and made two energy. Yeah. Kinda gave you like 
a card and two thirds worth of value. Yeah. So hopefully they have balanced it a little bit better. Well, I mean, I don't know that they had to have balanced it better. If they keep the balance the same, it's probably appropriate modern power level. Probably, yeah. Like and, we are, I am thinking about it in yeah, like a standard context. But yeah. if they, I think I think it's a a mechanic that if they, you know, modern horizoned it and like cranked the knobs to eleven, oh, then it could certainly be an issue. Then it could be an issue. Yeah. So, and there's a couple cards that have been spoiled that like look very knob turdied. Yeah. The wheel, like the wheel, could yeah, be like the wheel. The wheel could be, could be problematic. We'll uh, we'll talk about that in a future episode, maybe. Yeah, um, but yeah, energy it gives you an extra resource to mess with, mm -hmm. um, which is can be interesting. Sometimes it can just be fiddly. Yeah, there's like two kinds of energy cards. There's cards that all they do is give you energy. And then there's cards that usually will give you some amount of energy and then also give you a way to spend that energy. Yeah. And it's another resource just like mana or life or cards or whatever else. Uh, so. Next up, we have Bestow. This is a mechanic from original Theros. It's a keyword that's on enchantment creatures. And it lets you cast the enchantment creature, I think, always for an alternate casting cost. And you can cast them as an aura. Um, if you, if the enchantment creature with bestow is an aura on a creature, and the creature that it's enchanting dies, the card with bestow will fall off and then become the enchantment creature that it, it always was. Um, the thing that works kind of weird with bestow is that when you cast it for the bestow cost, it's not a creature. It's an aura. Mm -hmm. So something like uh, the essence scatter wouldn't be able to counter it if you're casting it as an aura. Um, gotcha. The other thing that's weird, and I didn't even realize this until I was reading this article, is that if you cast a bestow on a creature and... Yes the creature becomes an illegal target, it doesn't fizzle. It just, like, ETBs because as a creature. creature. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I I remember that from, like, way back in the day, because, like, oh, what was the, uh, the, the one green green flash 4-2 guy? Boon Seder. Boon Seder. I cast many a Boon like, Seder in my day. Yeah, if, if, if the, the target died, you were, you still got a 4-2. Um, it looks like everything that was, everything that is an Umbra yeah. is also had, uh, I guess now the politically correct Umbra armor. Oh, totem is the, totem is the problem. I guess I'm, I I'm assuming that's what the change was. Yeah. Like, cause I. I don't know. I've not seen why they are changing it. Yeah, I don't. But I mean, I didn't know it, that totem was a problematic word, but it it strikes me that like that is why they've changed a lot of these like words. Yeah, right. Has been like someone finds it offensive. Yeah, I mean, I guess which, it is, okay. Whatever. I guess it is a word with a certain connotation, but yeah, but uh, yeah. So there are every. Everything that had Umbra armor was an Umbra. Yep. So I think they just were like, fine, we're just going to make it that. Yep, makes sense. Um, <clears throat> all right, so next up. Uh, one more thing on Bestow. Oh, sure. Is that if for some reason a Bestowed creature gets, gets flickered or like reanimated or put right into play, it can't ever enter Bestowed. Okay. The only time you can pick to bestow it is if you cast it from your hand. Every other for time, as, it's for going, like alternate cost or yeah. whatever. Every other time, it's going to enter as a creature. <clears throat> yeah. Um, next up is modified. We can kind of skip that one because mm -hmm. we had that, I guess, in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Yep. Sure. Um, so we have adapt. 
Yeah, I don't remember Adept. Well, I guess Adept was uh, guilds, right? Yes. So, um, as a creature adapts, so uh, adapt creatures will have a cost on them mm -hmm. that'll say the cost and then adapt X. Yep. And X is the number of plus one, plus one counters you put on. Yep. But you could only pay the adapt cost if it if the creature has no plus one, plus one counters on it. Right. So you pay the adapt cost, then the creature checks to see if it has plus one, plus one counters on it. If it doesn't, then the adaptability will resolve. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the adapt creatures have some sort of when this gets a plus one, plus one counter, do, do a thing, thing associated, with, associated with it. Yep. Now, you don't have to get that plus one, plus one counter from the adapt. Right. You can get it from anywhere and still get the ability. Right. You can also do that same ability multiple times if, like, let's say you have, you adapt a plus one, plus one counter on it, and then you proliferate. Right. So when you put the second counter on it, you'll get the ability again. Mm -hmm. But you can never activate the adapt once you have a, or the adapt won't work once you have a plus one, plus one counter on it. Correct. Uh, next and, up, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I liked your note of if a creature somehow loses its plus one, plus one counter, you get to, uh, you can adapt again. Oh, yeah, so that's what can. I was going to say. Like, if you had, recently we've had, I mean, I guess not super recently, but we had some cards that put, like, neg one, neg one counters on stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, an Amon Cat, there was a thing where you had to, like, put a neg one, neg one counter on one of your creatures in order for whatever card to do a thing. Um, a neg one, neg one counter and a plus one, plus one counter, like, poof out of existence when they touch mm -hmm. each other. So something like that, you could adapt, put a minus one, minus one counter on it for some reason, and then adapt again. Or I think like Heartless Act. Sure. Yep, that too. If you just removed all the counters for some reason. Yep. Or removed three counters or whatever, yeah. Yep. Uh, next right. up, we have Annihilator. This is an oldie. Uh, it's a mm -hmm. triggered ability that triggers whenever the creature that has it attacks. It's always going to be Annihilator and then a number. And then when it triggers, you're, that's going to tell your opponent how many permanents they have to sacrifice. Yes. Super good, brutal. Good. It is very brutal. Yeah. It is a mechanic that um, they have used very, very, very sparingly. Yeah, it's not very fun. Exactly, because it's not a fun mechanic. Yeah. Getting your board just like annihilated is not something that people are like sick. Well, it's almost so like you do it to yourself to too. Like it's not your opponent's like I'm gonna kill your thing. It's like here, sacrifice some things. Let's play yes, a game. You, <laughs> you have to do this. Yeah. Um, you've done this to yourself. You have to do this now. Yep. Uh, I was looking. So there's like an uncommon with annihilate uh, annihilator. Mm -hmm. Um, there, and then there's a mythic with Annihilator, I think. I think those are the only two. I mean, we have very little of the set spoils. So we have very little. I see only two right now. Yeah. So it will be on a couple things. Yep. Um. Yeah. All right. Not great to be on the receiving end of. No. No, I mean, I mean, that's, that's why Emrakul the Aeon's Torn was so good. Uh-huh. Um. Next up, we have uh, Affinity. Sure. So Affinity is uh, templated Affinity for, I like this, something. Something. So usually it's artifacts. Mm -hmm. um, there is Affinity for enchantments in this set. We've had Affinity uh, we for have, islands. Yeah, for Affinity for different lands Yep. over the years. Um, and so basically if you have Affinity you reduce the casting cost of the card, the the generic mana casting cost of the card by by one for each uh, each permanent that is the type the card has affinity for. Right. So if you have affinity for artifacts and you have a seven mana four four, mm -hmm. if you have seven artifacts, it costs zero, and you can just play it. Yep. Um. Congratulations, you have a 4-4 four, four Ornithopter. Yes. Uh, you 
Uh, so this is um, been played a lot in modern recently because of Simulacrum Synthesizer. Yep. Uh, so uh, this card, this is very, very, very powerful as an effect. Cost reduction always is. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we have Afterlife. This is also not a super old mechanic. Uh, when a creature with Afterlife dies, you create a number of 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creatures with flying equal to its Afterlife cost. Yeah. Also from guilds, or was this... Uh... Uh, I think it was guilds, because it was the Orzov mechanic. Yeah. And I was either guilds Orzov's or allegiance. Go- I don't remember what yeah. it was in. You say it wasn't that long ago. It was five years ago. Okay, well, I guess it was a while ago then. It's five years ago. Podcast is five years old. Yep. So it's it's five years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very solid limited mechanic. Yep, super straightforward. Does what it says it does. Um, ascend is a is a fun counting mechanic. Um, yeah. So this is... Uh, so it has kind of two different cases. If it's on an instant of sorcery, when you cast the spell... It see it, uh, as the spell is resolving, it checks to see if you have ten or more permanent. So ascend just is basically if you have ten or more permanents, a thing happens or right. can happen. So for spells, it checks as the spell resolves. Do you have ten? Mm-hmm. And then if you do, you get the like bonus that is tacked onto the spell for ascending. Well, no, that's not exactly true. Because so you count to ten, and if you have ten. You don't get the bonus, you get the city's blessing. Oh, and then yeah, you get okay. the city's blessing forever. Like okay. nothing can take that away from you. Even if you lose even if you get annihilated out of the game and have to sacrifice all of your permanents, you will still have the city's blessing. And okay. then things with ascend will care about you having okay. the city's blessing. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's a it's a little bit weird in that. Yeah, regard. it's it's a little bit more it's a little bit more permanent. Yeah. Just that, like, once you get the city. But you have to have something that cares about ascending before you can get the city's blessing. So you can have 100 permanents, but if you haven't played a card that, like, has... Has ascend. Has, has ascend or, yeah. like, you know, checks for the city's blessing, you don't get to get the city's blessing. You have to do something. Well, so only cards with Ascend can give you the City's Blessing. The City's Blessing, okay. And then those cards will care about having the City's Blessing, but also, like, there may be some other cards that just care about the City's Blessing. Gotcha. Like, I don't think you have to have Ascend in order for something to care about the City's Blessing. Not the City's Blessing. Um, I think we can skip Collect Evidence, because we did that, like, literally, like, two months ago. Probably Connive as well probably connive as well that's been a little less frequent uh recent but i think everyone knows how uh, uh rafine's informant and rafine work yeah so how about cycling i mean i think people know how cycling works yeah it's become like kind of evergreen now yeah yeah so devoid a banger <laughs> the most intuitive mechanic ever what color yes. is your card let me check. Yeah. So how does Devoid work? So Devoid makes whatever card has Devoid on it colorless. It's a static attribute of the card, I'll say. It's not really an ability because it counts as Devoid regardless of zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's used to make things with colored mana symbols colorless. Yes. I think that's basically so, it. Yeah, it kind of just um, is is a way to we want this thing to be colorless for colorless things matter. Right. But we want it to have a colored mana cost almost for like color pie or uh, uh, reasons. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to check real quick because I I think that Devoid is like uh, universally reviled as a mechanic. Mm-hmm. So I quickly brought up the storm scale to yeah. see where Devoid fell, 
and it's somehow a five. Oh. Um, another thing that you will, as we go through these, that you will see for a horizon sets is um, a bunch of uh, what's it called? A bunch of uh, um, st storm scale cards that are like we're not ever going to do this again. They don't show up in Horizon. Yes, yeah. yeah, so like Storm is a ten. It's in there's, this set. There's... Spoiler. Annihilator is a nine. In this set. In this set. Dredge is a nine. In this set. Flip cards. In which this I'm set. assuming in the set. Yeah. Um. So, so I like I like that Devoid a five, but Ingest from the same set as a nine. Hmm. I actually liked Ingest better than Devoid. Yeah, like I think ingest was like a feel bad mechanic, but anyway, there's too many mechanics to get sidetracked. Anyway, oh yeah, sorry. Lock um, back in. No, it's my fault. I went on the little tangent. <laughs> so it's basically it about the mechanic. Uh, one more caveat, I guess, doesn't really come up in competitive play, but for color identity for brawl and commander, uh, devoid does not change the color identity. So, so devoid, devoid card with. Yeah, if it has, it has black mana identity. symbols, it is color identity of black, and you cannot put it okay. in your Heliod deck. Suck. Yeah, or your you... Eldrazi deck. Yeah. Well, they fixed that. <laughs> did you see the new? Did you see the new Eldrazi commander? Yeah, it's like all of the titans squished together. It's three titans in a trench coat. Uh. I was just going to say, it is simultaneously a colorless commander and a five-color commander. Yeah. yeah. It's three titans in a trench coat. Like <laughs> Ulmazek or something. Yeah. Or who needs Ulzakul? Who needs restrictions? Yeah. Um, then we have Devotion. I feel like we did this relatively recently, but we Devotion... We talked about it, but... Oh, I guess we had Devotion through Us Beyond Death, didn't we? Yeah, that was four years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, devotion is uh, it refers to your devotion to a color. So it's basically counting the number of mana symbols on permanents you control. Mm -hmm. So if you have one black mana symbol in, in play, you have a devotion of one. Two black mana symbols, a devotion of two. So... Um, so you have a so cards again will do something based on your devotion. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a card in the set that will search for a card based on your um, uh, with a mana value less than or equal to your devotion to black. Yep. So it's three and a black. So if it's the only black card that you have uh, when it it hits the battlefield, your devotion is one. Yep. I think probably the most prolific devotion card is Gary, where it's a drain life for your devotion to black. Yeah. Um, the, yeah uh, it's, it, it is a pretty fun mechanic. Yeah, that's cool. The, uh, the only thing that I think is worth noting with devotion is like the weird mana costs. Um, Phyrexian okay. mana counts as a devotion to whatever color it is. So like a Phyrexian black counts as a black mana for counting devotion. And mm -hmm. same goes for hybrid. Like if you have a hybrid green blue, it counts as both a green devotion and a blue devotion. Gotcha. Uh, you can't have devo you sadly can't have devotion to wing dang. That is cr well, I mean I guess you could Maybe. Maybe we could, yeah. Yeah. Um I'm gonna let you take this next one because it's like your favorite okay. mechanic. It is. All right, so we have Dredge. So Dredge is a replacement effect mm -hmm. that says if you go to draw a card, instead of drawing that card, you can Dredge N, where like the card will say Dredge and then a number. Mm -hmm. And Dredging is you put the top N cards of your library into your graveyard, and you return the card from your graveyard that had Dredge. To your hand. So, to your hand. So if you have dredge, if a card has dredge three, if you decide I don't want to draw my next card, I want to put the top three cards of my library into my graveyard and return this card from my graveyard to my hand. Mm -hmm. um, you also, like, 
if you have multiple draws, let's say you cast a tormenting voice and you ca- and you get to dredge a- and you get to draw two cards, mm-hmm. you can dredge for the first <laughs> card that you would draw. And then when you go to draw the second card, you can decide, hey, I have another dredge card in my uh, graveyard. I would rather dredge than draw that card, or you could decide to draw the card. Mm -hmm. So each instance of draw gives you a chance to dredge. Right. Um, This is a a mechanic that is kind of busted and uh, leads to you playing games of magic that don't involve you doing the basic thing. Yeah, Yeah, the basic things of magic, like casting spells. Uh, Bridge is a mechanic that you either love or you hate. Yes. And uh, I love it. I'm a pretty Um, big fan. It it has gotten worse over the years. Like, fair dredge... uh, Fair dredge leads to kind of repetitive games. It's something that uh, uh, Patrick Sullivan brought up, where... uh, What is it? Golgari Thug has, Mm -hmm. like, dredge four, I think. I think, yeah, four. And it's like a one-one has death touch before death touch was a thing. So it's like when it deals combat damage to a creature, kill it. Yeah. Right. So like you could just literally only cast that same Golgari thug the entire game. Mm -hmm. Right. If like the best thing you thought you could do is to play a two mana one, one death toucher, you could just do that and like never do anything else. So it's kind of a boring game. Yeah. I mean, even think about like situations where the game might not be that boring. Um, loam decks Mm -hmm. or lands decks you're basically doing the same thing every turn and I'd argue that loam is a fair dredge deck yes like just about every version of it you're not playing a different game like you are with combo dredge um, but the games play out very similarly because you're just milling cards into your graveyard and then getting them back with loam play my wasteland wasteland you loam Yep. Get a wasteland back. What's going to happen next term? I'm going to wasteland you again. Yep. And he's kind of getting this loop of doing the same thing. Yep. But like it does, it is a mechanic that allows you to do things that no other mechanic in the game lets you do. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Right. Like you can, you know, the like dredge in vintage is like there's no other mechanic that like could substitute in for that or do anything that is like a, a reasonable uh, facsimile of it. Yeah. So it does kind of give like a unique gameplay, Mm -hmm. but it is because of kind of the repetitive nature and the fact that, you know, it can just be busted. Yeah. They, I think in modern horizons two, there was one card with dredge and it was shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and they were like dredge one, because we really don't want you blank. (laughs) Because we're scared. We're scared. Dredge one. You can get it back. Yeah. But we don't want you to do anything crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, they really couldn't have done much else with Hogek in the format. That's very true. (laughs) Uh, So what is our next one here? Next up, we have Emerge. All the way back from uh, Eldritch Moon. This is a keyword that lets you cast a creature for an alternate cost if you sacrifice a creature to cast it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to reduce the emerge cost by the sacrificed creature's uh, mana value. Yeah, so like if you have, was it Elder Deep Fiend cost eight, but had an emerge cost of five blue blue. Mm -hmm. So if you cast, if you sacrificed a five drop, it would just cost, or five drop or more. Yep. It would cost blue blue. If you sacrificed a one drop, it would cast cost four blue blue. Yep. Um, this the article said that there's a new variant of this called Emerge from Artifact, and the difference is that you have to sacrifice an artifact instead of a creature. Gotcha. I I'm assuming that's the only Emerge card we're gonna have. I don't. I guess I don't. There's ar- no. There's already one. Oh, is the there? The big dumb dragon. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, yeah, the Big Dumb Dragon is, like, standard emerge. Yeah. Where, well, 
it has a merge and then gives all of your stuff a merge. Oh, okay. Um, so it is nine mana, has an emerge of six red red, and then says each creature spell you cast has a merge. The emerge cost is equal to its mana cost. So you can like emerge an Emrakul out of a Fragmite? Yes. You could you could use like a Frogmite or a uh, Mirror Enforcer yep. to make uh, this guy cost red red. Yep. And then sacrifice this to make Kozlek cost zero. That's fun. <laughs> fun times. <laughs> fun times. Yeah. And Lord help us if we somehow have a emerge cre- like an emerge creature with like flash or something where you could then in response to the evoke on Null Drifter, use Null Drifter to evoke it. I mean Elder Deep Fiend had flash. Yeah, Elder Deep Fiend, but I guess a modern power level emerge guy. Yeah. Um next up we have Entwine. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of kind of three? not really a mechanic anymore because we've done it so much. Well, I mean, we've also done it without it being a mechanic. Yeah, like there's so, some. Yeah, go ahead and explain it. I said so. Entwine is you can the the spell has a casting cost, and then uh, you can I can't remember exactly how it works here. Uh, so you can pay an additional cost to get like both modes of the spell. Yeah. So like it's pick, it pick A or B for the casting cost, or if you pay the casting cost plus the entwine cost, get both A and B. Right. But yeah, we've done lots of different versions of this. Yeah, I mean the the commands are kind of entwine without having yeah, to I've... pay entwine. Yeah, so like we might we mentioned this as like again, it's kicker. Yep. Uh but so I think we mentioned something similar when we talked about like spree. Yeah. Right, that some of the cards could have just been like, you know, casting costs, do a thing, pay extra, do another thing. Yep. This these are all casting costs, do one of these things pay a kicker cost, do both of them. Yep. And that's kind of what our next mechanic is as well, Escalate. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, you get to pay the entwine cost multiple times to do multiple things. Yes. So, these, the cards that saw a lot of play were the brutalities. Uh, uh, Well, they weren't all brutalities, but collective brutality, collective... Oh, they were collectives. Yeah. Collective... Brutality, collective defiance, yeah, collective effort. Was Sorry, the red I. One. Uh, I think it was collective defiance was the red one, and collective effort was the white one. Oh, okay. I think. I think I think I think I could very well be. Maybe wrong. you're right. Brutality saw uh, the most play. That was the black one. Yes. I. Uh, yeah, brutality, defiance, and effort. There were only three from, uh, what's it called? Eldritch Moon. Uh, Eldritch Moon, yeah. So there were only those three. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's Kicker. Yep, basically. Again. So, uh, yeah. And so then yeah everything's the, Kicker. At the everything's end of the day. Kicker, including Kicker, which is coming up, and we're probably going to skip because it's just Kicker. <laughs> It's just kicker. Um, uh, next up, we have Eternalize, mechanic mm-hmm. from Hour of Devastation. Uh, it's an activated ability that creatures will have, and you activate it when the card's in your graveyard. When you activate it, you pay its Eternalize cost, and you exile it, and then you get a copy that's a 4-4 black zombie token. That's mm-hmm. like that card, but a 4-4 black zombie token. Um. The only thing it doesn't retain is its mana cost, right? Yeah, because it's a. Because it's a token, like it's an eternalized it version. Ke- does it keep its mana cost? It said in the article that it did not. Okay, I be- I believe the article then. I yeah. I could not remember. Yeah. But yeah, okay. 
And that's it. So four or four black it. zombie, whatever it was. Yeah, I mean it's it's a way to get two cards out of one. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they like grow. Right? Like it's like, oh, yeah. this was a one one, but now I eternalize it and it's a four four. There well, was that double there was that double striker. Like um Oh, what was the blue one? Champion of Oh, and Champion of Wits. Yeah, Champion of Wits. Was a 2 1. 2 1. Became a 4 4. Yeah. Yep. All right. Evoke, which I just mentioned. So, Evoke is an alternative casting cost. It gives you a different way to cast the spell. And if it, uh, so when, if you evoke a creature, it comes into play and then immediately sacrifices itself. Yep. So, typically, these all have some enter the battlefield ability. And so you, you're like, oh, like Null Drifter from this set costs seven mana. And when, it, when you cast it, you draw two cards. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I really would like to draw my two cards before turn seven. It has an evoke cost of uh, two and a blue. So you could evoke it, get the, in this case, a cast trigger, but then lose the body. Um, now, you know, if you were to blink the creature somehow in response, in response to the evoke trigger, that creature would stay around because once it gets exiled and comes back, a new, it's new game object. It's a new game object that, that no longer knows it has to sacrifice itself. Yeah, was not evoked. Yes, what I I don't know where that would ever come up. That seems very corner case. Yeah, English. I don't I don't know. It's almost. I vaguely remember us doing an episode about that when we reviewed a dip- different set. Different Modern Horizon set. Yeah. And we were like, why would you do this? And then that became the entire meta for three years. Crazy. 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 Every so often we hit it out of the park. Yeah. It's almost like we brewed that whole deck on on, uh, on our On the episode. show. We should go back and just be like, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. What's this next one? Evolve. This is kind of a weird one. Uh, evolve is a keyword that a creature will have and it triggers whenever a creature with greater power or toughness or both enters the battlefield under your control so it'll trigger if the power or toughness or both are greater than its power or toughness or both the trigger goes goes on the stack and then as it resolves it checks again to make sure that power and toughnesses have not changed gotcha so that's the tricky part is it checks it twice it checks it when it triggers and it checks it when it resolves um otherwise it's a way to grow your creatures uh kind of like the champion of the parish grows whenever you cast or whenever a human etbs Mm -hmm. um that's kind of like what evolve does except instead of it being a human it's relative to greater power anything bigger yep um Sharp Eye Rookie from Murders at Karloff Manor mm-hmm. uh, is Evolve, but they wrote out the rules text yep. because they didn't want to keyword it, but it's the exact same thing. Help Collector. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. This next one is like, again, one of those mechanics that doesn't see that much play, and it's Extort. Well, the people that like Extort love Extort, though. Yes, Brad. Yes, we know. <laughs> we know. We know. All right. So extort is a trigger is a triggered ability that triggers whenever you cast a spell, and as the ability resolves, you can play pay white or black. Yep. And if you do, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Uh, I like this. Interestingly, the white black hybrid mana symbol only appears in the reminder text. So if extort appears on a black card, that symbol. Doesn't add white to its color identity for commander deck building purposes. I did not realize that. Um, now yeah, so you know. Now I know, and knowing's half the battle. Um, so what's his name? Um, so in this set, there's like uh, the, Soren. The, the fl- yeah, the flip walker Soren. Yep. On on the planeswalker side, it just says extort. Yep. Nothing. No reminder text. Just I hope you know what this means. <laughs> well, it, there's reminder text in the front, I think. Okay, there might be. I don't remember. I just I just remember seeing it and being like, all right. Like, let's hope we remember this. Good luck. I've been playing long enough that I did, but again, again, I remember like this this is not a set that is designed for you to like just like 
right. get into. Like you're supposed to have been here for a while. Yes, you are right. There is extort on the front. Um, the other thing about extort is that it triggers once per time you cast the spell per instance of extort. So if you have extort on three different creatures, they will each trigger once when you cast the spell. Gotcha. Then you can pay it, you know, one time for each instance of extort that exists. Mm -hmm. uh, next one we have is fabricate. Uh, creatures with fabricate will have fabricate and then a number. And it's a triggered ability. When it ETBs, you get to make a choice. Uh, the creature will either get that many counters, plus one, plus one counters put on it, or you get to make that many 1-1 one, one artifact servo tokens. Um, this mechanic is, like, great, and I'm sure it's going to be, like, in white in this set because it allows you to bridge, like, the typical, like, red-white go-wide mm -hmm. mechanic. Into the late game. And, well, like, it, it lets you go wide. Yeah. But then it also allows you to play white green mm -hmm. like counters, like plus one plus one counters, because mm -hmm. that now those cards do those cards do both things. Double duty for limited. Yeah. So in limited, like you get you get a card that's like the counters player once because it does counters things, but also the go wide character uh, player once. Right. So it's a really good limited mechanic. Yep. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's too much to add. No. Then we have Flashback, which you should all know had, what it does. We had it relatively recently. Yep. And then we have Kicker, which... We know what that one is. We know what Kicker is. Everything is Kicker. Everything's Kicker. Um, then we have Living Weapon, which is kind yeah. of an oddball. Uh, when an equi It's on equipment. When an equipment with Living Weapon ETBs, you make a zero zero black Phyrexian germ and attach the equipment to it. So it mm -hmm. kind of and it gives the bonus that it would give to a creature to this germ. So it's the first version of um Reconfigure. Four Mirrodin. Oh sure. Yeah that Right. So like what Four Mirrodin made like a two two then put itself on it? Yep. I forgot about four Mirrodin. This this makes a zero zero. So it was kind of like the first go at yeah at this, uh, and it, it's one of those things that like for weird timing reasons. I guess it's because it's all one ability. Yeah. The zero zero doesn't die right before the equipment attaches to it. Yep. But yeah, next um, up is madness. Yeah, this is a great mechanic. It's a lot of fun. I hope there's just it's on more than just Emrakul. So Madness gives your cards an alternate casting ability, uh, way to cast them mm -hmm. if they're discarded. Yep. So if you discard a card, a card with Madness for any reason, it goes to exile on its way to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it goes to exile and it says, hey, do you want to cast me from exile for my Madness cost? And you can say, yes, I would. And then you get to pay its madness cost, and you put the spell on the stack, and it does the thing. Or you can be like, I'm sorry, man. You have to go to the graveyard. I, I don't want to cast you. Not this time. So yeah. when you discard a card with madness, it goes to exile on its way to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it says, hey, do you want to cast me from exile for my madness cost? And if you say, yes, I do, you pay the madness cost. It goes on the stack just like any other spell. If you say, no, I do not want to catch you for your madness cost, it goes to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And you can discard this card for any reason. So, like, you have uh, Underworld Cookbook that has you discard a card. Your sure. opponent makes you discard a card for some reason. Discard the hand size. Discard the hand size. Yeah, so you discard the hand size, that trigger goes on the stack, and you still get to try to cast it. Yep. Um, I would not be surprised if they did something where they were like, hey, here's a card with cycling that also has madness. That'd be cool. You know what I mean? Where they're like, hey, you can, you can cycle this yeah. and then cast it or just cycle it when you just need to uh, cycle it or whatever. 
So is there any reason that you've discarded the card? We'll send it to exile for you to cast it. Yep. I'm a big fan of this mechanic. One of my favorites. Yes. It is a lot of fun. Um, next up, we have Mentor, which I also feel like wasn't that long ago, but I also think was in Revnica Allegiance. So, again, five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever a creature of Mentor attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power than that creature. Was it... Was it in... Oh, gosh. Uh, it was the Goblin. It was the Goblin, but I was wondering if it was... Uh, there is there is another mechanic that was similar to it in like in, in Midnight Hunt or whatever. Yeah. Yes, that was. Yes, but um, it wasn't. I forget. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was mentor, not mentor. Yeah, not mentor. That's, that's what this was. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like training in a training. There we go. This is an aggressive, like limited mechanic. Training is backwards mentor. Okay. Backwards mentor. Well, it is. Okay. <laughs> um, next up, we have morbid. So morbid is an ability word. It doesn't really have any meaning. But basically, it is if a creature died this turn, then um, the morbid thing happens. The morbid trigger happens. So it can be on spells where it might be like, what is it? Tragic slip is yeah. black for neg one, neg one. But if a creature died, it's neg 13, neg 13 instead. Yep. And then there's creatures that'll be like, hey, if uh, if on your end, morbid, on your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on this. Yep. Or something. Just a shortcut for if a creature died this turn. Yes. Uh, Outlast is coming back. From mm -hmm. cons, fate, original dragons, cons, cons. Yes, cons. It's an activated ability that you can only activate during your main phase. Um, so basically, sorcery speed, mm -hmm. and it puts a counter on the creature when you pay its cost. And its cost is, I think they all involve tapping it, right? Yeah, I think it's mana plus tap. Yeah, that was kind of it the is... thing. Is it it outlasted instead of? set up attacking and, yeah or yeah or blocking yeah to be a blocker um it's a super slow mechanic yep but a lot of times the you know it'll be, it would be a way to get a counter on something for like hey creatures that have counters plus one plus one counters get flying yep have trample so i'll outlast my creature again i get get the effect yep uh we have overload which is just kicker again um, basically so each spell with overload has a target and then when you, if you cast it for its overload cost rather than its mana cost you change the word target to each mm -hmm. so so if the target becomes illegal even if you overload it you the, the spell fizzles no if you overload no? it there is no target okay like if you cast it for its not overload and never, you never have to declare a target. Okay, my fault. Yeah. Well, if you cast it for overload, you don't have to declare a target because you're yes. changing the words on the card. The wording, yes. So, yep. So this this is cleave. <laughs> it's a, you, you, I mean, I'd argue slightly more elegant cleave, but sure. Slightly more elegant, yeah. So, like, um, was electricery was, like, one in a red, deal one damage to target creature, one red, red, deal one damage to each creature. Okay. Cyclonic Rift return target. Yes. Or return Permanent. All. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Next we have up. Proliferate, which we mm -hmm. also had not that long ago and also talked about earlier. When you're when you proliferate, you chose any number of players or permanents and put an additional counter on that player or permanent of each type that player or permanent already has. Mm-hmm. Um, you can choose any number of targets. You don't have to choose all of them. It can be any of them. However, if something has multiple counter, multiple types of counters on it, you can't pick and choose which counters get proliferated. They all do. So, like, if you have a Gideon that's a creature during your turn and you pr 
pro and it has a neg one neg one counter on it and you proliferate that gideon gets another neg one neg one counter and a loyalty counter mm -hmm. if you have a poison counter and an energy counter and you want to proliferate yourself you get a poison counter and an energy counter yes uh prototype we can skip we just had that one not too long ago yep flashback is uh, on this list twice for some reason it's in the article it's a, twice it's a flashback it's a flashback uh, reconfigure we had in comic dynasty yep we can probably skip that one yep i think so reinforce i don't remember so i also don't remember this card this to reinforce to activate a reinforce ability discard a card pay the reinforce cost and then target creature you control uh will get the indicated number of plus one plus one counters yeah when is this from i don't know um like i don't remember this this is before i started playing i think I don't. Um, so looking it up, uh, Lorwyn? Lorwyn block. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, like... MH2 had one reinforced card. Yeah. And so there's... Uh, or get one or two. And then, yeah, that is from Lorwyn block. Yep. Like... The total number of cards that have the word reinforced and it was like and there's two of them that we can't count because they just say reinforced in the name. Um right. There are like 10 12 yep. uh three of three of them have reinforced in the name. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, there are uh, 13 on the list and three of them have reinforced in the name, so. Yeah, so there are 10 cards in Magic's history. Yep. I mean we we could maybe see the crossover of a card with reinforce and madness. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. So like, reinforce a... is cycling, except instead of drawing a card, you put counters on a thing. Mm hmm. It's yeah. Remember the uh, the oh gosh. In Ikoria, where you put like yeah, yeah. you would cycle in and put a, put an ability counter. Yep. Kind of the same deal. All right. You got Storm. I mean, we already no. talked about Storm. Um, yeah. Whenever you cast a spell with Storm, you copy it for each spell you cast in addition to the Storm card this turn. Um, it does not count copied spells. It only counts cast spells. Mm -hmm. But it does count spells that didn't resolve. Yes. Um, I think that's Was basically it put it. on the stack. I think yeah. it's um, storm is a triggered ability. Okay. Yes. So the spell has a trigger. Yep. So even if you, even if if you counter the spell, the trigger the, the spell was storm. Right. The triggered ability still goes on the stack, and you get all the copies. Yep. And you can also, if you have a stifle. Or I guess a disallow or a nimble obstructionist, you can counter the triggered ability and make it so a storm doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Edge cases. Edge cases. Hey, we're gonna do this in under five hours. Oh, um, that's crazy. Support. Support N means you put a pl number of plus one plus one counters uh, on uh, any on that many target creatures. So, sorry. Try again. Support N <laughs> means you put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to that many target creatures. Creatures can't support themselves, which is kind of sad. <laughs> like, like the just like no support. Like, yeah, you you can't gas yourself up. Someone nope. else has to be your external. <laughs> uh, so, um, this is from BFZ or yeah, Oaf? I think so. One of those. One of those. Um, it's fine. That's another like, limited mechanic. Yeah, there's clearly going to be a green, white, plus one, plus one counters theme for sure in this in this uh, limited environment. One hundred percent. Yep. Which I'm sure we'll talk about once we get the signposts. Yeah. Now to the infinite last 
last mechanic. The infinite mechanic is fitting because it's unearth. Uh, yes. If a card with unearth is in your graveyard, you can activate its unearth ability as a sorcery. It comes back to the battlefield, gains haste, and is exiled at the beginning and next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield before then. Yeah. Um, I guess we had Unearth in Brothers War? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah fine mechanic. Yep. I guess works well with the new Grist. Absolutely. Um, we also have a card, Unearth. Yes. Yeah, so that's everything. So I think it's important to note that while there are, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 different mechanics. Yeah, a ton. There's going to be a lot of, like, one-off cards. Oh, definitely. Where there's, there's going to be a card that has support. Mm -hmm. Or a card that has unearth. Or a card with affinity or whatever. Yeah. So there aren't going to... It's not like there's going to be tons of them. Which, on one hand maybe makes it a little easier but on the other hand like m makes it harder because like you could see 15 or 20 different mechanics in a single game right i mean you might have 15 uh, or 20 mechanics in your deck in your yeah so like that makes it harder but if there's like a mechanic that like you're just like i don't understand this you can just avoid it <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah, hopefully annihilator is not that common yes I mean, there's only one Titan that has Annihilator. Yeah. So, but yeah, so it's, it is, um, in terms of, like, the way this plays out, it's kind of similar to, like, Cube on some level. Mm hmm definitely. Where, like, there's a bunch of, like, one-off things, and, like, you find, like, weird little combinations of, like, oh, like, this mechanic from 20 years ago works really well with this mechanic from 20 weeks ago. Right. And like, there's no other place other than cube that they would ever like get mashed together. Yep. So, um, I'm still it is a lot. to be on arena. Yeah. It'll, it'll be good on arena. Yep. Uh, I might have to come upstairs and play since, you know, iPad. <laughs> uh, so anyway, with all those mechanics, I think we got a show. That was a very mechanical show. Very mechanical. Uh, which is right up your alley. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'd rather it wasn't lately. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So um, if you have ideas for the show, uh, if you want to reach out to us on social media, we got uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, Discord, email, all that stuff. Reach out, say hey, give us show ideas. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about. Yeah, hit us up. Uh, there will be an upcoming set review episode if there's any individual cards that you've seen previewed, spoiled, whatever that you want us to talk about. You can shoot those over as well, so I'll add them to the show notes. If you're looking to support the show, like I set up at the top, there's two ways to do it. The first is TCG Player via our TCG Player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. Surf over there, buy your magic cards, support the show doesn't cost you guys anything extra and helps us out we'd appreciate it if you mm -hmm. want to support us directly you can do so at patreon.com slash casual tryhard mtg go on over there chip a couple bucks in you get access to twice the content out of us because we record our pre-show every week and pipe it right out to our patrons and you get to check out my show notes so you get a sneak peek about what the show is going to be about or if you want to read up on some of these 40 mechanics you can use it as reference material if any of that yeah. sounds good, or if you just want to support the show, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG and help us out. Yeah, so with all that, I think we got a show. We got a show. Oh crap, I forgot what I was supposed to say. That's right. Uh, we'll catch you on we'll the internet. We'll catch you on the internet. <laughs> man, oh man, what happened to me? 278 episodes in, and we can't figure out how to close the show. All right. <laughs>